Hello, and welcome to Life Skills, the virtual game show. I'm your host, Michael Roberts. Life Skills is a game show where four contestants, each representing a school, will go head to head in trivia and challenges for a chance to win a special prize. You all excited? Yeah. Woo! Yay! Let's meet the contestants. First, we have Austin, representing Lake Washington High School. Austin, tell us a little about yourself. I'm a sophomore at Lake Washington High School. I run cross country and track. I'm the vice president of Serial Club, and I work at your neighborly Ace Hardware. Go Kangs. That's great spirit, Austin. We're happy to have you on the show, and good luck. Our next contestant is representing Juanita High School. Hi, Savannah. What can you tell us about yourself? Hi, Michael. First, I would like to say what an honor it is to be here representing Juanita High School. I'm so excited to have a chance to win the prize for my school. A little about myself. So, Juanita High School, go Rebels. I'm the treasurer. I have two amazing golden retrievers and a fish who is now 11 years old. I'm really excited to be here and can't wait to go get started. Go Rebels. I totally share your excitement and good luck on today's show. Our next contestant comes from International Community School, or ICS. Addison, what should we know about you? Hi, I'm originally from Vancouver, Canada, and moved down to Kirkland when I was 10 years old. I would say I'm really artsy. I like to draw and doodle, and I'm also part of the United Na- Model United Nations. Thanks, Addison. Great to have you on the show today, and good luck. Our final contestant is Nick, who is here representing homeschool teens. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Nick. Hey, everyone. It's great to see some new faces um, other than my family. Um, Tell you a little bit about myself. I'm an avid chess player. I love playing my viola. and I like to invest a lot of time in my my cooking. Um, So I don't don't really have a school or a mascot. So I'm just going to say, go home school. All right. Now that we've introduced all the contestants, let's get to the rules of today's show. There are three rounds. Round one consists of a mixed trivia format. Contestants can choose from 14 relevant categories, finances, household skills, jobs, and education. The contestant who chooses the category and point value gets to answer the question. But if they get it wrong, they give other contestants a chance to steal. Round two will challenge the contestants with the same categories, however, this time with difficult scenarios. The final round, round three, is a high stakes final question. Be ready for round three. Whoever has the most points by the end of the round three will be declared the winner and win the special prize. Here we go. Nick, you're up first. Choose a category and point value. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's, uh, Let's do household skills for 200 points. Good choice. Your question says, What is the safe minimum cooking temperature for chicken? A, 180 degrees. B, 165 degrees. C, 160 degrees. Or D, 145 degrees. Ooh, um, I mean, 160, that's my favorite number, but uh, let's go with B, 165 degrees. Correct, good job. The FDA guidelines require chicken to be cooked at a minimum of 165 degrees to kill harmful germs that cause food poisoning. Nick, back to you. Okay, well, um, let's keep it rolling with the 200s. I'll go finances um, for 200. Your question is, which savings account is better in the long term? A, $100 with 3% APY. B, $500 with 1% APY. Or C, $200 with 2% APY? All right. To be honest, um, I'm not quite sure what an APY is. Um, So I'm going to have to go with B, $500 with a 1% APY, um, because it has the most money in the account. I'm sorry, but that is very incorrect. Oh. Anyone else? A, $100 with the 3% APY. Correct. Savannah with the steal. Looks like being the school treasurer came in handy today. APY, or annual percentage yield, is the interest rate that you earn at a, from a bank. 
This is money that the bank gives you for keeping money in a savings account at their bank. For a long-term savings account, you want an account with a low fee and higher APY. Austin, you're up. All right, let's go with something I know. Let's do jobs for 300. Okay, going bold. Here's your prompt. List the five most important parts of a college resume template. Oh man, that's a really hard question, but I think I have my answer, okay? I think I'm gonna go with contact information, education, work and volunteer experience, awards and honors, and skills. How'd I do? That is correct, incredible. Good job, Austin. Back to you. All right, let's do uh, education for 100 points. Here's your question. What are the names of the college entrance exams required by some universities? A, advanced placement. B, SAT subject test, ACT. C, ACT, SAT. Or D, SAT, ATC. Ooh, man. Let's go with C, ACT and SAT. Correct. Austin, you're on fire. You're up again. I think I'm doing good right now. So let's go with household skills for $300. Let's go big. Okay. Okay. Your question is, what is a common household ingredient that is great for cleaning dishes, appliances, and stains? A, detergent. B, bleach. C, lemons. And D, baking soda. Detergent is good for laundry. Bleach is really good at disinfecting and cleaning things. Lemons, what is that even good for? Baking soda, when mixed with vinegar, creates an explosion. So that's pretty cool, but I'm going to have to go with B, bleach. Well, unfortunately, you are incorrect. Isn't it baking soda? Yes, correct. Baking soda is great for cleaning stains, grease and gunk, getting rid of bad carpet smells, cleaning appliances, dishes, and even soothing bug bites. Bleach is great for disinfecting surfaces. Detergent is for laundry and lemon juice can be used to remove odors from refrigerators and shine certain services. Addison, good job, you're up. Okay, I think I'm gonna choose household skills for 100. Here's your question. What should you do to unclog a toilet? A, use a plunger. B, flush the toilet. C, add more toilet paper. Or D, do nothing. Well, that's pretty easy. Isn't it A, you use a plunger? Correct. You should submerge the plunger so the rubber ring is over the drain and then push and pull on the handle in quick concentrated thrusts without lifting the plunger out of the drain. What a crappy situation. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, Haddison, you're up again. So I think I'm gonna finish the column of household skills for 400. Sort the following steps to do laundry in the correct order. Sort the fabric type, unload the washer, pick a water temperature and cycle, load the washer, add detergent, hand fold, store clothes, load the dryer, sort by color, and check clothing labels. Well, I know you do all of these. Um, I don't usually do the laundry though, so... Is the first one adding detergent? I just... I'm sorry, Addison, but your time is up. Any other contestants? Yes, I, I have an answer. The order is check clothing labels, sort by color, sort by fabric type, load the washer, add detergent, pick a water temperature, and cycle. Then unload the washer, load the dryer, and finally hang, fold, and store close. Amazing. That is correct. Oh, nice job, Nick. Very soiled and dirty clothing should be washed with cold water while bed sheets should be washed with hot water and towels with the hottest water to sanitize them. Nick, what category and point value will you choose? Jobs for 100. Good choice. Here's your question. What is the minimum employment age for most low-level jobs? Uh, I don't know. Um, 16? Incorrect. Oh, I know what it is. It's 15. 
I know that because I couldn't become a lifeguard until I was 15. Correct. And thank you for your service as a lifeguard, Austin. 15-year-olds can work as a lifeguard at pools and water parks. But before a minor can work, make sure you get parental permission and permission from your school. Austin again. All right. This is my time to shine. Let's go jobs for 400. Okay. Here's your scenario. Your interview is about to end. And the interviewer asks if you have any questions for them or the company. You should say, A, no, to show that you did your research. B, yes, how much money would I make? C, yes, what do you expect from someone in this position? Or D, yes, how long does it take to get promoted? Mm, I know for sure that you always want to ask questions to show that you're interested in the job, Probably shouldn't talk about money in the interview because they haven't offered you the job yet. C looks pretty good. D, definitely not. You are interviewing for the job, not a prerequisite or another job or promotion. So I'm going to go with C. Correct. Austin, you're on fire. And that closes our second category of the day, jobs. Like Austin said, it's against customs to talk about salary or promotion at a job interview until the company has offered you a job, at which point you can discuss compensation, bonuses, and hours. All right, now to Nick. You have three three point values to pick from in the education category. Education for 200. Your question. What is the name of the application that universities require to be considered for financial aid? FAFSA? Correct. The FAFSA form is easy to fill out. You just need your own and your parents' tax information. Nick again. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to go right down the line. We'll do education for 300. Second to last question. Most students are told to go to college after high school. What are some other options or alternatives to a four-year university or community college? Technical school? Close, but that's partially correct, but we don't give partial points. Any other contestants? Wait, is it technical, technical school or trade school and apprenticeship? Correct. Technical school is a career-focused education that's usually completed in two years and is a lot cheaper than a four-year college which includes a lot of classes not directly relevant to your career. Apprenticeship is are offered through an employer and is paid training and education in the specific career you wish to have. Let's go to the final question. The final question of the round is, what percentage of Washington Community College transfer students get into University of Washington? A, 10%, B, 54%, C, 47%, or D, 66%. Come on, that's so trivial. No way, it's supposed to be hard. It's worth 400 points. I have to guess, so I know UW isn't easy to get into, so maybe 47%, C? Incorrect. Is it D, 66%? Am I correct? Yes. In 2019, 66% of transfer students from Washington Community Colleges got into UW. So if your grades aren't there yet and you want to go to UW, don't worry. Community College is a great option. This concludes round one. Here are the totals. Juanita High School, 900 points. Homeschool, 800 points. Lake Washington, leading with 1,000 points. ICS, 700 points. We're going to take a quick break and then resume to round two. Contestants, welcome to round two. You will now compete in a short scenario game called What Should You Do? You will be randomly assigned one of four scenarios and will respond to the scenario with what you should do step by step. 
Responses can earn anywhere from zero to 600 points, depending on the correctness to a rubric. I'll first introduce each of the scenarios and then assign each of you to one of the scenarios. Ooh, man, this does seem really hard, but I'm actually pretty excited about it. Yeah, I just hope I don't get any impossible scenarios. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Here are your scenarios. Scenario one, you get into a car accident in your neighborhood. Thankfully, you and the other driver are okay, just a little shaken up. You see damage on the front right of your car and the back right of the other driver's car. What should you do? Scenario two, you bumped into a candle in your house and now there's a small fire. There's a fire extinguisher in the cabinet near you. What should you do? Scenario three, you walk down into your basement and immediately notice a quarter inch of water on the ground. Your basement is flooded. Your parents are away on a trip. What should you do? Scenario four, you recently got a credit card and quickly discovered the ability to buy on credit. At the end of the month, you realize you can't pay the full bill and now you're in a whirlpool of credit debt. What should you do? The results from the randomizer are in. Austin, you're assigned to scenario one, Savannah, scenario two, Addison, scenario three, and Nick, scenario four. I like that. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. You have one minute to prepare your responses. The, remember, the more detail in your response, the more points. Ready? Begin. Looks like Nick finished first. And that's time, stop working. We're gonna start with scenario one. What should you do if you're in a car accident? Austin, you're up. Okay, so here's what I come up with. came up with. The scenario says that the people involved didn't get injured, so there's no need to call an ambulance. The first thing you should do is move your car off the road so you're not in the middle of traffic. Next, you should exchange information with the people involved in the accident and get their contact info and insurance information. Once you get all that, call the insurance company to file an insurance claim. Congratulations. You earned yourself 300 points. Wait, what did I miss though? The full answer is to first move your car to safety to the sidewalk or shoulder. The second is to call 911, especially if someone is injured. The third is to exchange information. That means full name, contact info, insurance company and policy number, driver's license, license plate number, color, type, model of the vehicle, location of the accident, and importantly, don't discuss whose fault it is. That's for the insurance company to decide. Document the accident. That means you need to get name of the badge numbers and name of officers if they arrive on the scene. Uh, get a copy of the police accident report. Take down, take pictures of both the cars from multiple angles. Um, and that's the big thing that you missed. You need to take pictures of the cars and also call your insurance agent um, if you're comfortable and to file an insurance claim. Let's move on to scenario two. What you should do if there's a small fire in your home. Okay, so my answer is the first thing you should do is call the fire department if necessary. So like if the fire is only in a towel, you probably don't need to call 911. But if you're if the house is burning down, you should probably leave the house because the fires can spread really fast. But for this situation, you should grab the fire extinguisher, point it at the base of the fire, and squeeze the handle. Correct. You received 500 points. Yay! The complete answer is, if appropriate, call 911. The second thing you should do is identify a safe evacuation path before approaching the fire, because as you said, it can spread really quickly. If you have any doubt of your ability to fight the fire, you need to get out of there as fast as you can. Next scenario is scenario three. What should you do if your basement is flooded? So, well, first, this would be a nightmare, of course, especially since you parents are away on a trip when it happens. So safety first, you should make sure that it is safe to go down to the basement and that 
and that you don't slip or get electrocuted because that wouldn't be fun. And then you should go get rid of the water with one of those water vacuumy things and towels. And also you should pick up everything that's wet and let it dry and open the windows and doors to get out ventilation, to let it get ventilation. And I think that's it, right? Very close. You earned yourself 500 points. Yes. You missed just a few details. The complete answer is yes, make sure it's safe to enter, look for electrical and slip hazards, remove the water as soon as possible with the wet vacuum. If you don't have one, you can borrow or rent and you want to use the towels to wipe up excess water. This is immediately, this is important because you want to um, keep the area dry as to prevent mold and also don't forget to wash your towels immediately. Use the humidifiers and fans to move air around, run the AC, make sure there's a lot of, event, lot of ventilation, again, to prevent mold. You want to remove all the wet items from the basement, make sure wet spots are not being covered by a sofa or a table. And if, if you think you can't handle it, call a um, flooding or a water repair company and they can get it professionally cleaned. Last but not least, scenario four. Nick, finish us off with what you should do if you get into credit card debt. Yes. Uh, so the first thing you should do is find out how much you actually owe uh, to the credit card company. And then once you do that, you can plan how to pay it off as quickly as possible um, because of the high interest. Um, next, you should probably stop using your credit card so your debt doesn't get higher. And um, maybe call the credit card company to ask to lower the interest rate. Um, if possible, you should pay more than the minimum monthly payment so you can remove the debt as quickly as possible. Perfect answer, 600 points. Yes, credit card companies charge high interest rates, meaning you have to pay a percentage of your total debt to the credit card company, which over time accumulates to more than you actually owe. That was an awesome round two. The final scores for round two are the following. Juanita, 1,400 points. Tied with homeschool, 1,400 points. Lake Washington, 1,300 points. ICS, 1,200 points. Wow, this is a close game. On to round three, the final round. <laughs> For the final round, the rules are simple. Everyone gets the same question or scenario and you bet your current point totals. If you get the question wrong, you lose the points. If you get it right, you win the points. Sound good? Yep. Nick, we'll start with you. How many points are you going to risk? 200 points. I think it's smartest to go small. Addison? Um, I think I'll do 200 points too. Savannah? 400 points. Go big or go home. Austin? I think I'll go with 300 points. All right, let's begin. Each contestant will have the chance to answer. Your response will be recorded, and once everyone has answered, I'll let you know if you're correct or incorrect. Here's your question. Name all of the essential kitchen tools you need for cooking. All of them? Okay, uh, you need a knife, pots and pans, and a cutting board? Thank you. Your answer has been recorded. Now to Austin. Okay, let me think about what I used to cook. You probably need a knife and a cutting board, probably a nonstick pan as well, a large pot, a skillet, a sheet tray, um, a, probably a food processor as well, and a tabletop mixer for baking. Addison is next. Okay, so I think you need a pot, a pan, knives, a cutting board, a sheet, a sheet tray, a skillet, and, a me and measuring cups. Okay, Nick, you're up. All right, this should be easy because I cook a lot at home. Um, the essential should include a skillet, knife, cutting board, large pot, large spoon, measuring spoons, measuring cups, sheet tray, a peeler, and a fine mesh strainer. 
Okay, for the moment of truth. Here it is. Savannah, you are incorrect. Dang it. I knew I missed something. Austin, you are also incorrect. What? A stand mixer is essential to me. Anything can be essential to you, but everything is not about you. Addison, you are incorrect. Gosh, at least I didn't waste you that many points. And finally, Nick. Nick, you are correct. <gasps> that leaves a three-way tie. And Nick, as the winner of Life Skills, the game show. Congratulations, Nick. You won. Good job. Good job. Good game, Nick. That was good. Yeah, that good was job. Fun. Thank you to our contestants for participating. And, of course, to our audience. That was Life Skills, the game show. Hopefully you learned some life skills today. I'm sure our contestants did. Congratulations to Nick, representing homeschool students, for winning. Nick, what do you have to say? Wow. What a rush. Normally, I'm winning um, viola competitions, but this is totally different. I want to thank my parents for teaching me these life skills, but really, you can learn these skills on your own. Uh, at any time in your life, it's not too late. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, and good night. <laughs>